The world is our classroom, and we're bringing you along. When we first got to the Kalahari, the first thing we did is got off the plane, got in the trucks, and we just went rhino tracking. It started out pretty boring because there was absolutely nothing. We were just driving for hours. When my brother or Doug, who worked there, heard something in the bushes, we then stopped the car and got out. We went for at least a five minute walk, and then we saw a family white rhinos. When I first came face to face with the rhinos, it was kind of like, what's about to happen? What's going on here? And at the same time, it was just, wow, look at these guys. I mean, they're nothing like you think. You can see them at the zoo, but the zoo ones to me, are, they're not as wild. I mean, you've got the zoo ones that are just walking around, minding their own business, and then you've got these that look like they're going to run at you and put their tusks down. I was like, oh yeah, yeah, they're just, they're just grazing. Then the baby saw us, and then it starts walking towards us. And the mama sees, and she thinks we're a threat to the baby. I was thinking, the thing sees me, she's gonna charge. It was pretty scary. Talk a little bit louder, there we go. Our guide goes, all right, just talk a little louder and he starts raising his voice and then all these rhinos look at us and we're kind of like, are you serious? Are you kidding? But he was being serious. It was really the only way to not scare them and get them to come at us was to make us know. Uh, talk a little bit louder. A rhino kind of reminds me of some prehistoric animal. It's really bulky, it's big. It doesn't look like it can get around very quickly, but in the reality it can run extremely fast. It was like looking at the grill of a truck about to run you over. Yes, we'll go for the tree if anything should happen. Our guide told us to, if they do turn around and try to charge you, and you go and hide behind a tree, a thick tree, because they can run over any flimsy things. I knew if a rhino charged me, I couldn't run faster than it, but that was okay because I knew that I could run faster than Gannon. The whole idea is to dodge it. First you get it away from people, so it follows you, and then you dodge it. And the, you know, this bushman decided he'd climb a tree, but it was one of these thin guys. Eh? So he was right next to the ground, hanging on to it. <laughs> Eyes closed. <laughs> I would definitely recommend going to find the white rhino on foot. Um, it was definitely really exciting. Only thing I have to say, though, is be really careful, because sometimes things just happen, and they're known to be pretty aggressive. Rhinos. They truly are amazing and terrifying at the same time. It makes you think, am I gonna die? Am I gonna live? Am I gonna get to tell my friends this? And when you do the experience, it's like, yeah, I'm gonna be able to tell my friends this. Staying in a car is boring. I mean, you don't really get to view it live. I mean, it's like, wow, I was standing a few feet from a rhino. This is me. It's just really fun. The experience was great. When you go into the desert, you see these bushmen, and you look at the bush and you think, how do these people live here? There's no water, there's nothing. But really, there's everything you'd never need. I mean, the bushmen have lived there for tens of thousands of years. It was touching. They didn't, they didn't have a lot, but they'd still be able to have a great life. One of our guides just pulled out this big, colorful thing of like lollipops. To them, that lollipop is like a Christmas present. The huts really were just big sticks that they had found and they'd stand them up and they'd put them in clay so they'd all stay together. There was a bunch of kids, they were all just sleeping in the dirt. I mean, there was one mattress, I think, in the entire place. But I just feel bad because the 
winds would blow and they'd be cold. We're all standing there in our jackets and we're all freezing and shivering and there was one boy who had a bad cough and he was just wearing a pair of underwear and then there was other kids that were just wearing like very thin t-shirts. You really felt like obliged to just send them all these clothes so when we got back we kind of gathered up all the clothes that we don't really wear anymore and we sent it to them. One of the bushmen decided to take us out on a walk and we walked around for a while and then she just stops and goes down to this little stick kind of and starts digging around it and she pulls out this big gourd and she gets a stick and she starts shaving off shavings of it and then she hands it to me. At first Wyatt's like, I'm not doing that. And then mom's like, you're doing it. I have to say it was the worst tasting water I've ever had in my life, but it made me think about how much water we all go through every day and how much water we use. I mean, water's so scarce out there, but it's so plentiful here and we don't really appreciate it. That is so big. And then they had this little tree. It was like a toothbrush on a branch. And I was like, wow, you basically use a stick for your toothbrush. I was totally serious because their teeth were so nice and clean. One really big problem they have down there is a snake called the black mamba. It's extremely deadly. It's one of the most poisonous snakes in the world. And while we were down there, we had to walk around with these snake guards on because if it bit you, you'd die right there. And these bushmen are just walking around barefoot. Everyone was just walking, I'm like, no, nope, snake, in the bush. Turns out to stick. Later that night, me and one of the guides went into the town, and we just walked around and asked random just people if they wanted to come and perform a dance with us. And we filled up this entire car with a bunch of people, and we just drove back, and they just put on this huge dance for us. I'd sometimes be puzzled, what would you dance about? And then now I see it as, I guess, living or being able to live with families and have friends. I guess if I could wrap sort of this up on the Bushmen, I'd say it was because they wanted to be happy. When I thought about going on an African adventure, I think the thing that excited me the most was seeing the lions. I mean, a lot of people said that if you want to go see lions, you, you go see the Okavonga Delta. I can't imagine a better place to view wildlife than the Okavonga Delta. The Okavonga Delta is a series of waterways and islands in northern Botswana. It's said that it's the largest inland waterway on Earth. And where there is water, there's wildlife. The Okavanga Delta has some of the world's most crystal clear water. It's so crystal clear, you could drink out of it. I, on the other hand, wanted to swim in it. I then found out why you would never want to go swimming in the Akavanga Delta. The Akavanga Delta is swarming with crocodiles and hippos. When you see a hippo, they seem playful. They don't seem like they're some dangerous animal, but in the reality, hippos kill more people every year in Africa than any other animal. Let me tell you something about hippos. They're notorious for flipping boats, but that's not what I want to tell you about. When they're underwater, they sound like they're telling jokes, and when they come up, they come up to laugh about it. And that's why it sounds like, uh, 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 uh. In the Okavanga Delta, it's not just animals that live in water. I mean, there's literally everything. You have lions, you have wildebeests, you have giraffes, you have elephants, you have red lechwe, you have all these different types of impala. You name it, there is everything there that you would want to see.
One day while we were driving in the Delta, we ran into a roadblock and it was uh, seven male lions. These things were big and you're within jumping distance of these really vicious wild animals. They could have grabbed us and pulled us out of the car. But one thing that I learned is that with lions, you don't move and you stay still, you start to form in their vision something big, something too big for them to attack. So they should leave you alone. But if you stand out of the crowd, you could become one good filet for some lion. Let me tell you, lions, you don't want to move. When I was in Botswana, I saw a female lion nursing her cubs. And I just thought to myself, I couldn't see a poacher take that away. One of the biggest threats in Africa right now is the poaching. Um, a poacher is somebody who illegally kills an animal for its skin or its fur or its tusks. I can understand somebody who's going to kill to support a village or for food, but I can't understand somebody who's going to go kill for sport or money. When I bring my kids there, I want to be like, hey kids, look at the zebra running. Look at the giraffe showing its neck. Look at the lions running for a decent meal. Poachers. We're gonna stop them. We were driving through the bush one day and we saw this lion kind of hiding behind something and as we got closer we discovered that he was eating a Cape Buffalo. A Cape Buffalo, one of the big five. I mean, it was really scary because he had flies all over him, blood on his face. Being around a male lion that's eating, that's nuts. And when he growled at us, we decided, I'm out. We got out of there as fast as we could. When you're on safari in Botswana, you hope to see the big five. We had seen the elephant, the lion, the Cape Buffalo, and the rhino. The one animal we didn't see was the elusive leopard. The leopards are really kind of shy animals. They, they hunt at night and they sleep in trees during the day. And if they sense that a human's coming, they're gonna get out of there as fast as possible. The last night we, uh, we heard that there had been a leopard spotting and we decided right there and then that we were gonna go out really early and look for it. So at the crack of dawn, we grabbed our bags, got in a truck, and started to drive. Until finally, we found the leopard. The elusive leopard that had been slipping through our fingers was now only a few feet away from a camera shot. It had waited for a Cape Buffalo to die and had just started to eat it. And he was licking all the blood off of his paws and at the same time you're kind of freaking out because he doesn't see like lions, he can see each and every one of us and he knows that we're not one big animal and he's just staring at you as he licks his blood off his paws. It was so graceful, the spots, the fur, the eyes, especially the eyes, because they just stared at you aimlessly. So that was it. We'd seen the leopard. My trip to Botswana was life-changing. From the animals that were so abundant to the people's inspiration. I can't wait to go back there. Botswana really changed my life and kind of the way I think about a lot of things. Um, I think about how much water we waste every day and how much electricity we use and seeing Bushmen living off with no electricity, pulling water out of the ground, literally. Um, I mean, it was just, it changed the way I think about wildlife and changed the way, way I view Africa.
Do you want to become a member of the Youth Exploration Society just like us? Visit TravelsWithGannonWyatt.com That's where you learn how to become a member of the Youth Exploration Society, an organization of people like yourself who love to travel and are interested in world geography, cultures, and wildlife. This website also includes information about the animals in the book and what you can do to protect their habitats. There's also photography and video from all over the world and information on the upcoming books in the series.